Hello to everyone and welcome to today's webinar on going support and best practices with EPM. My name is Hayden. I work for UK Oracle User, User Group. Um, today we are extremely lucky to have both Simon from Accenture and Vinesh from Anumi presenting on this well voted for topic. Um, just briefly, I'm going to explain the layout of today's webinar. I'm going to do a brief introduction about the UK Oracle User Group and then going to hand over to Simon for his 20 minute presentation. Um, we will then have five minutes for Simon to answer any questions. We will then move on to Vinesh, the same format. So 20 minutes with Vinesh and then five minutes for questions. And then there's some more time at the end in case you wanted to ask both presenters some more questions. Um, for those that don't know, we are an independent user group away from Oracle, delivering unbiased content through webinars, meetups, forums, events, and conferences. We deliver content around the latest Oracle applications and technologies. We tackle your everyday problems and introduce you to specialized experts within your fields. With over 700 member organizations, we host approximately 50 events a year. If you would like to know more about membership, please do just reach out to me via email. Just gonna quickly talk about some events that we've got coming up. We have Applications Unlimited in, on Tuesday the 18th of June. We will be hosting, um, it's currently in the process of calling for content, which means if you feel like you want to speak at the event, please do let us know and reach out. There'll be five different streams covering EBS, Hyperion, PeopleSoft, JDE, transitioning to cloud and more. If you're interested in speaking or attending, please do just follow the link at the bottom of the screen. Another event we've got coming up is our annual IUG Scotland, which will soon be launched in the agenda form. So do keep an eye out for that. It will be hosted in Glasgow and there will be five streams of sessions, including both Oracle applications and technologies. If you do wish to know more about what's coming this year, please do just reach out to me or head to our website and click events. Now, before we get started, just a couple of housekeeping um, rules. If you do have any questions, you should have a question box in the bottom right hand of your screen. If you are having trouble, having trouble hearing or if you can't see the image clearly, please do just type in there and I will try and fix the problem for you as well. Um, following the event, this webinar is being recorded and I will send out a post event email which will include the recording, It'll include contact details for both Simon and Vinesh there as well. Now, without further ado, um, I'm excited to hand over to Simon. Bear with me. Right, yeah, I'm still there, don't worry. <laughs> Just launching everything up. Wonderful. Can you see that okay, Hayden? Everything's perfect, it's crystal clear. Excellent. Um, so, yes, today I'd like to talk a little bit about um, EPM Cloud and how release management works on Oracle EPM Cloud. Uh, dealing with the challenges of platform updates and also mitigating risk as well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to also turn on the webcam as well. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so a brief introduction to myself. Um, I've been in the Hyperion and EPM cloud world for 20 years now. I'm the EPM support manager at Accenture, and I joined back in 2014 as part of the Pure Apps acquisition, uh, and I run our team in Winchester. Uh, my previous experience is right the way across the board. So I've been an end user, consultant, uh, developer, administrator, the full works. In terms of the Accenture EPM support team, then we have um, at the moment about 25 clients uh, across Hyperion and EPM Cloud. Um, we've been working in this space for over 10 years. We're obviously attached to a consultancy as well. So uh, we take a lot of the business from there, but also we deal with standalone support clients at the same time. And you can see some of the clients that we support. So one thing, well, the main thing that I'd like to talk to you about is the statement that Larry Ellison made back at Oracle uh, saw in 2018. Uh, quite a wide ranging, uh, yeah, bold statement. 
once you're in the cloud, that's the last upgrade you'll ever do. So we've had a lot of questions on this, and I think it raised a lot of questions as well about just what that means if you do transfer to Oracle Cloud and what impact that is. Is it really as simple as that? Is it a case that you just sit back and the platform works absolutely fine? Or other things that you still need to be involved in when it comes to upgrades and patching? So what I'll do first is I'll take a step back to where we've come from, uh, to the Hyperion world and you know, other on-premise products as well. So in the Hyperion world, customers own their own hardware or occasionally it's outsourced, but customers have the responsibility for their own hardware. They're also responsible for the infrastructure, upgrades, patching, so everything around Windows, SQL, antivirus, all those kind of things at the same time. They're responsible for the Oracle and Hyperion upgrades and patches. That patching is done on an as needed basis. So very much it's a case of Oracle releases a patch, the customer goes in, has a look at what that patch contains, is it pertinent to um, their business. Sometimes you look at a patch and you go, this doesn't really impact me the system's running perfectly stable other times you might say ah oh, i need that new compatibility there's a new version of office that i've been waiting for the compatibility on or we've got performance issues we've got things like that so very much it's on a case-by-case -case basis that you look at uh, do you want to upgrade do you want to patch and then you build that around your own business processes so very rarely are you going to go through and start a patching cycle when you're coming up to year end or when you're coming up to a critical period. Some uh, companies have um, moratoriums on upgrades or patching for a two or three month period around uh, month end. If you're looking at upgrades itself, then those are normally longer term things. So these will take you know, potentially weeks or months, especially if you've got other considerations as well, if you're upgrading hardware, if you're upgrading other components, you might use that as an opportunity to look into lots of other things to do with your implementation. But the key thing throughout all of this is that the customer has retained control. So you can decide what you want to upgrade, when you want to upgrade it, and build it totally around your business process and your business needs. Now we compare to how EPM Cloud Platform updates work and the key points and differences. As you're almost definitely aware that this is a SaaS solution, so software as a service. So Oracle manage their own infrastructure and software. That isn't something that you get to peek behind the scenes anymore at. You don't look at services. You don't look at all of the tasks and components that sit on your servers anymore. Another key difference here is that Platform updates are pushed. So it's not something that you request anymore. It's something that Oracle do on a scheduled basis that once a month they will push updates through and we'll look at that schedule in a moment. This ensures that every customer is on the same platform version, which in, uh, means that there's more consistency. It means that when you log a, an issue with Oracle, you're no longer saying, oh, well, I'm on patch 702. Oh, well, I'm on patch 700. And the Oracle stop response from premise is upgrade to the latest version, patch the latest version. That's the version that we're supporting. So every cloud client is now on the same version, which is great. But it does mean one key thing. And this is something that a lot of our customers have asked us about. Customers can't opt out of a platform update. So those platform updates will hit once a month and you cannot say to Oracle, no, I don't wanna do things for two months because my uh, year end is coming up or we've got a, a key business task going on. That cannot happen anymore. And so it's the question that's been raised to us a lot in terms of how we deal with this, um, lots of, IT users aren't happy with this, um, or at least have raised concerns. So what I want to have a look at throughout this presentation is 
what is the risk involved, but also how you manage the perceived risk, how you go to mitigate some of those things. So looking first, we'll have a look at the EPM Cloud release schedule. Now this happens every month, as I say. Uh, the last Friday of the prior month, Oracle will release the notes for the new uh, month. So that will come along every single month. You will then get a week to review those notes before the platform, your test environment platform is updated on the first Friday of every month. You then get two weeks after that before your production environment is updated. Those updates will always occur during a customer maintenance window, which is something that you define when you first set up Oracle EPM Cloud. And that's normally late on the Friday night or early on the Saturday morning. Just to give you an idea of the kind of thing that Oracle actually released to their customers in terms of the information. So the first thing that you get is that you'll get an initial awareness email. And you can see by this, it's telling you the updates will occur to your test environments at a particular time on a particular date. And then two weeks later, those same updates will hit your production environment. And again, you can see straight away that isn't an option. This is what will apply. And then it also provides links so that you can look into the features that are involved there uh, and what issues are fixed. The first thing that you'll see is you'll get a release summary. So uh, that will go through, that will give you links through to new features, what's new, full product documentation. And then you go into your individual um, product. So for this one, I'm looking at planning and budgeting cloud, but there's also similar updates for FCCS and the other EPM cloud components. So the first part of this will focus on what's new for the current month. Uh, for March, it was a very sparse month that there were very few updates, but we've had quite a few updates in prior months. Um, so you'll get that. You'll also get a future updates uh, component as well. So this will actually tell you what is in the pipeline, what is going to be coming in a scheduled future month or something that is planned so that quite often Oracle will garner feedback on the kind of things that are going on. So a couple of the key things that we've got in the future updates at the moment is that Oracle are removing the classic dimension editor and it's moving just to a simplified interface. Now this update has already been put off three or four times because clients have gone back to Oracle and said, we're not comfortable with this at this particular time. We need more time to get used to the idea of using the simplified interface because it is a ground shift. Similarly, another one that has appeared for a number of months now is Oracle removing the ability to create new composite forms. Now composite forms were a big thing back in uh, the on-premise planning, and they've been used for many years on that front. Oracle are trying to remove those and get people to use dashboards instead, because the functionality is easier to implement and easier to support, at least from an Oracle point of view. But of course, there's a lot of people who are, have migrated composite forms, want to make tweaks to those, and still are looking to create new ones. Uh, that has been slated I think initially it was slated for the end of last year. Uh, the updates for January and February were saying it was coming in March. When we got the March updates, it was now saying it's coming in April. So that kind of thing will come through very soon, but it gives the opportunity for customers or um, implementation partners to actually go back to Oracle and say, please hold on, please delay this a bit further. Once it's actually in the release notes for the current month, then it becomes quite a bit more difficult. The third component of the release notes is the fixed issues. So this is something that we see with on-premise as well. But in on-premise, you go through and yeah, you might look at things a few weeks after the patch is released and say, OK, what does it do? Do I need this? With EPM Cloud, we know that these updates are coming within yeah, a few days on test and a couple of weeks on the production system. So it's important, again, to have a look through all of these. Now, what you'll notice at this point is that 
administrators, business users, system owners, 